If there is one thing the internet agrees on, it's that you should never change anything ever. I hope you die. Sincerely, Velma. I gotta hand it to you, kids. Finding that missing armored car after all these years. But uh, who are these two? Don't you recognize them, Sheriff? Why, it's Zeb and Zeke. Yes, that's a classic, and that's my point. Why change anything when the classics all still work, right? Well, what started out as a fishing trip sure ended in a dandy mystery. What's Scooby doing? Oh, he's still fishing. Aw, oh, come on, Scoob. Give up. You're not gonna catch anything in that bucket of water. Why change anything when the classics all still work, right? Yes, Fred Jones, heir to the Jones gentleman's accessories fortune, was arrested last night for murder. Well, thanks for me. My name, say my name. Vermin Dorkley. It's Velma Dorkley. I mean, Dinkley. Fred's a rich white guy with a tiny dong. He... Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help me, Shonda Rhimes, I do. We met at lunch in the eighth grade when he confused me for a beanbag chair. <laughs> Classic. Also, that he was just another entitled rich guy who might kill someone because he has a tiny dong. Why change anything when the classics all still work, right? Ah, uh, Velma Dinkley, a character born in 1969 alongside a group of characters known as the Mystery Gang. A group of characters that have gone down in the history books of television and animation alike. A character known for her cunning wits, high intelligence for science, and clumsiness. The bookworm, basically. A character that we've all needed once or twice in our group projects in order to secure that A. But a necessary and, well, over time, a beloved character that made the show feel complete. From that alone, you would start to think in even the slightest possibility that when a Velma spinoff show was announced by big budget collector HBO Max, that some nuance and craft would go into the production of a character that is so beloved and described as such. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? Now this, this is Velma, or well, what Hollywood likes to call the reimagining of a character. You see, spanning back around a decade or so, We've now gone from cunning and intelligent to cynical and oblivious. From the strongest link of the gang to the weakest character to watch. And with the kind-mannered persona of her character changing into a self-loathing, maniacal, and pathetic shell of a person that no one in their right mind would ever want to be around. And this is where the point of the video comes into play. Hate watching and what it means for Hollywood and its non-effectiveness. And while some might confuse hate watching for review bombing, that's a completely different study, and honestly, another video for another day. Now as you see, hate watching has been around for quite a while, dating all the way back in my young recollection to 2012 with the debut of a sequel series to one of the greatest anime and TV shows of all time in Avatar The Last Airbender. With the introduction of The Legend of Korra, while taking a new direction with the story in the world of Avatar, furthering the evolution of society as a whole, while also trying to handle and integrate the nostalgia aspect that the longtime fandom of Avatar The Last Airbender held on to. Unfortunately, in doing so, they failed to execute and provide the core premise of what made Avatar The Last Airbender so good in the first place. It's characters. Korra and her crew of new characters failed to meet expectations, leading to a majority fan backlash that eventually found the show cancelled, until later revamped when the fandom had time to relax and catch their breaths. The story of The Legend of Korra didn't help much in that aspect either, but the writers made swift and easy adjustments, leaning on their strengths and eventually finding a way to tell their complete story alongside the fandom in three more seasons once renewed. And while The Legend of Korra will never stand atop or even beside the original Avatar, the immediate response of said backlash was the reason why the vision was able to be completed in the first place. And now, The Legend of Korra isn't so bad of a watch. Moving us on to our second example, and man, do I feel like this needs a drum roll, but no, 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 no. We have She-Hulk. Oh! Crap. Now it's no secret that this was an abomination of a show, but yet people couldn't take their eyes off it to see what would go down next. And while on YouTube it was a cash cow, She-Hulk still found its way to being the third most watched Marvel Disney Plus series over casually good installments like Moon Knight and Hawkeye. Undeservingly so. And while The Legend of Korra looked at this unnecessary failure of a show that they made, 
and made pivots towards fandom, towards the paying customer, She-Hulk doubled down, trolling the fandom and making a mockery of the art of writing and character work itself, consistently taking insecure shots at the fandom while slurring down their own integrity of their complaints as fans by labeling them any type of ist under the sun, creating conversations at the sake of division within one of, if not the most popular IPs and fandoms in the world right now in Marvel. And well, I haven't seen Jessica Gao's name since labeled to anything. No way! Mega crap. And while this is starting to become a negative video, let me showcase to you what it means to go in the opposite direction. Look at the House of the Dragon. Now you don't need me to explain the chaos and the destruction that was the ending of Game of Thrones. We have never seen a show in the history of television build such apathy between its fandom in a matter of a couple episodes, let alone diminish the general excitement of a show once the sequel spinoff was announced. But what we got was, well, Game of Thrones. House of the Dragon showcased to us the audience that you can take a generally beloved IP and create your own story from your predecessor's framework without dismantling the core of its popularity and creating reinterpretations or reimaginings. As Velma said, Why change anything when the classics all still work, right? For the House of the Dragons and its flaws, none of them coincide in regards to the characters or the story, but more in the pacing and the lighting. Tackling and executing on the core aspects of its predecessor show while incorporating their own vision. Usually, a dimmed vision. Please change your lighting for season 2 for the love of god. I am tired of complaining about it every time I talk about this actually good show. They even kept the same theme song, allowing the audience to plunge into their nostalgia as if they never even left the world of Westeros. A truly fantastic show. Which now leads us into the real root of the issue and the question at hand. Can hate watching a show entail its success? Or is there something even more sinister underneath the surface of hate watching? With the provided examples, I leave the answer up to you. But I can easily say when it comes to HBO Max's reimagining of the character Velma, I've never seen a show of this caliber of IP simply fall off the map so hard and so fast even when it's compared to its non-canonical but sister show, She-Hulk, before its time. If I had to give an answer myself, I would say that Velma was a gigantic fuck-up, no matter how you look at it. While its initial release sparked some, uh, not interest and not intrigue, I'm truly trying to find the word here. Um, controversy, maybe? Yes. <laughs> that doesn't really entail success. And while some say success is subjective, and sometimes it's all about just making money, I ask yourself to look within and think to yourself, is success making money or is success the longevity of making money? Thank you guys for watching the video and like and subscribe for more videos like this. Definitely, definitely leave a like button because, well, I want this video to get out there even more than others. Hate watching has become the norm in our society and well, it's shit. Again, thank you guys for watching the video, and feel free to go check out some of my other Velma videos, but definitely don't watch the show. There's so, so, so many things better than that. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.